Alright, he's gonna do a U-turn. He's gonna U-turn. <laughs> What's the mule's name? Uh, this is Lou, and I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. She's, Hi, kind of, she's kind of a tailgater, but yeah, she's a big <laughs> The mule in front of us is a little faster than her, so I think it'll kind of like space us out <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she was scared, Michelle. I knew it would. I'm sorry, y'all. She's a tailgater, Michelle. Give her some. Oh, pick up my. All right, baby, go. So you're going. You guys know she's a mule. You don't hear him say, or you guys are going to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like a mule horse. Yes. The mule's in Ohio. Smaller. Yeah, she's a big girl. We. Her mom was a Belgian draft horse. Oh. Yep. Oh, you're gonna share your photogenic skills with us, ma'am, sir. If you don't know anything about the architecture of the quarter or the uh, history or anything, have y'all seen those little tiles? I'll try to point one out if I see it, but um, they have little tiles on the side of walls that talk about the old Spanish name. Oh, yeah. It's kind of weird to see that in the French Quarter. Um, we technically should call this the Spanish Quarter if we wanted to be really, like, specific. The city kind of bounced between both groups. Um, French quarters, right? Yeah, it's French quarters. Yeah, they're fantastic. So it's a Jake Hall. It's a Jake Hall. It's a name like Urban. It feels like it's destiny that, you know, it ended up like this. Kind of adult Disneyland energy. Um, but Bourbon is actually named after a royal family, the House of Bourbon. And it used to be kind of nice and boring. There wasn't anything crazy about it. Um, it was a Chinatown for a while. Nightclubs started popping up around the Second World War. And from the 40s to the 60s, the clubs were really nice. They used to be really elegant. You used to come to Bourbon if you wanted to like wine and dine a date or see a show or get like a nice dinner. And then the 60s hit, they have totally different laws. So it is hard to get in trouble on bourbon. It's not like everywhere in the city is, you know, it's not like you could get away with stuff everywhere in the city. You do kind of have to stay contained. Um, but they have a very long fuse. Well, I think that's is that us? I'll take out okay, the camera. Okay, I'm going to let you go. I'll call you later. Bye. Okay, bye. Yo, check out some of this pretty cast iron as we're passing. Oh, yeah. I like that. Um, you know, cast really like iron. Black, yeah, it's very pretty. Iron is not cheap nope. at all, but it, it definitely was like a big status symbol. If you wanted to discreetly show your neighbors what like tax bracket you were in, if you were trying to be real flashy, um, cast iron was like having a Mercedes Benz. Like it was like, I am at this spot. People would get it personalized, so sometimes they'll see letters in it or like a family crest. And they would get it on everything that they own. They would get it on their windows, their doors, their cemetery plot. Um, they would like mark their property. So some of the cast iron out here is gonna be one of them. Okay, we're going to the lower part of the quarter down here. This is Charters. There's some really cool boutique hotels down here. Um, if you have a property here in the French Quarter, if you want to paint your shutters a new color or get a different mailbox or move your doorknob over, um, 
you can't just go to Lowe's and be like slapping oh, yeah. a coat of paint on that. There is a historic commission, it's called the Vu Parade. Um, the neighborhood used to be called Vu Parade before French Quarter means old square in French. And they look over anything you want to do. They're notoriously <laughs> slow and strict. And they might take a couple months to get back to you and then say, no, you know, not that green, but you could choose these two greens. This is where you can get it made. This is how you can apply it, blah, 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 blah. So sometimes houses will kind of sit in disrepair for a while. Um, not necessarily because nobody cares. It's to, it is the Ursuline Convent. And this part, the convent, is the oldest building in the Mississippi River Valley. Um, and it is the one true French colonial building still standing here. Most of the early structures were burned down or torn down. This one never was. This one like made it through the chains and all. Through everything. So um, nuns don't live there. There are, there are nuns that like work in the offices there. But the, the active convent is uptown. But it's really pretty. They use it for weddings. It is pretty, you know. Where's the other two monsters? Um, we're going to pass this really pretty courtyard again. Get yourself in the courtyard if you can. This courtyard back here is one of here. The other so one is part of the jungle oh, yeah. Baltimore. I mean, Did you Maryland, see yeah. 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 Okay. Um, um, there is a man-made hill uptown. A bunch of parents got together and built a hill so their children could feel what it felt like to roll down one. That's actually the highest point, I think at like 12 feet. But this is like the highest, like, actual. And it's seven feet above, so seven, seven or eight above, feet above sea level. Um, we have neighborhoods that go as low as 20 feet below. That's the oh, lowest. Wow. So it is a pretty drastic Expensive difference. insurance? Yes. Flooding insurance? Yeah, so this is the, this is the corridor on this side. This is the Mary. We're gonna go through a little bit over here. This is the first subdivision and the first like working class neighborhood in the city. Um, this developed about a hundred years after the corridor. Very pretty property. This used to be the cheap place. A lot of people in the '60s, you know, a lot of artists and musicians who. Oh, nice. yeah, you like it on that. Yes, yeah. I'm like, okay, that's that is very creative. You'll notice a lot of shotgun doubles. I'll try to find a single to point one out. Um, kind of like yeah, kind of the side by side. A shotgun. You'll see them in a lot of single, super right? hot weather. Yes, the roof. So typically the the roof of a shotgun is gonna go perpendicular to the road. Right. But um, they, so this is this is kind of a wide single over here. It's kind of okay. pink and gray. Um, but you'll find them in a lot of hot weather states. South Carolina, Florida has shotguns, and it's like a tube of a house. They don't have hallways, or they don't have a uh, yeah hallways, and they will use pocket doors, so everything kind of slides into the wall. And they typically have transoms over the door, so in the summer you would pull it sideways. So you could kind of open that little window and get a breeze. And get a breeze. I get asked about it a lot. I've never seen Jackie. it. But this, this bar is the bar in the show. Oh, it is? I think it's called the True Note or True Yeah, Song. the True Note. So when they would film, um, so they have a little barber chair in there, they do a shot and a haircut. They have like a deal on Monday nights, actually. Where they, you can DJ like that, you get a buck shot, and then you get a shot and a haircut. Shot in here. Uh, <laughs> shot in here. <laughs> this is the lower quarter. This was called Little Palermo. This was nicknamed Little Palermo. It was very Sicilian, very Italian families back here. Um, I know everybody wants to eat Creole food or French food when you're here. Do not shy away from Italian or Sicilian food. There's right. some really, really good food here. They, Sicilians brought lemons here, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but lemons have citric acid in it, and it totally revamped food preservation. It like totally changed. Even the taste of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah really, yeah, yeah. yeah, like kind of brightens everything. Um, they say they have the best happy hour. There's a house that we're passing. It's kind of like a famous haunted house in the city. This triple decker gray one is called the Lollery. It has been featured in a couple paranormal TV shows. It's been in a very like horror Madame story. Lovely? Yes. Oh god, she's yes. a terrible person. So so this is that house right here. So when it gets darker there'll be like a bunch of 
Coors up here. Um, it's kind of famously owned by Nicolas Cage for a while, about 15 years ago. But yeah, this lady and her husband, um, you know, were, were known, long story short, they got found out they were doing experiments on people, on enslaved people. Oh, and the family kind of got kicked out of the city, but it was this big scandal. So anyway, there's people that live here that won't walk on the same side of the street as that house. The light now, is over. it inhabited? Yeah, it's all, the family that owns it, this is like their vacation place. So they own like three houses. Yeah, so there's a little, uh, there's a couple of vampire businesses. There's a place called Apothecary that's like a, a really cool place to eat dinner. But they will give you directions to a vampire speakeasy if you go in the bar. There's like a speakeasy in a different location and they'll tell you how to get in. There's like a rotating password to get in. Okay, but I'm not trying to do that. Oh, hi, how are you? Yeah. And then you're secretly a vampire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is slow, but it is kind of like... 